Hey Gemini, welcome to your reading. I'm Empress Rose. General reading, take what works, leave what doesn't. We'll just dive right in here. Overall for the reading, Eight of Wands, communication and ideas and passions um, coming down into reality, being communicated, being, I want to say transmuted from a theoretical passionate place into, on their way into reality. So generally speaking, typically we see this as a communication card, lots of communication. So whether that's happening or not, I don't know, but that's something that, that's the underlying. So it's either something that you want to have happen or you're looking at when does that happen or something like that. So, I need to, all right. All right, so Eight of Wands about communication. When do you communicate? What do you wanna say? Maybe you have a lot to say, but you haven't said it, um, yeah. So interesting. It's a, Eight of Wands is always so interesting because it happens in the wand suit, suits of passion um, and spirituality, but it's communication. So it's in its essence, it's this um, swords energy, but it's, it's this passion coming into sort of verbalization. We have a lot of throat chakra, transformation, growth, maybe growth in some area. It's like, you know, it's a very green and, and blue card. So heart and throat. And we have the butterflies transforming. So it's got some transformative energy. So some sort of communication to change something. And she's very happy about it. Happy communication. Past, present, inner landscape. What's at issue? Environment, to-do list, possible outcome. <laughs> oh my gosh this is a this is pretty cool honestly there's um several letters you know and obviously we're doing a an artistic rendering of communication with these letters so there's letters which is interesting um there's letters all over the place there's there's giving and we end up in receiving So, and we have a Knight of Swords, which is, we have the Knight of Swords, which is the communicator about the communicator. Knights are throat chakra communication. Swords are communication. It's communication about communication. Hmm. Fascinating. All right. Some interesting energies here. Uh, so in the recent past, we have Ace of Pentacles. Something began in reality. A lot of potential, something coming at, coming through from sort of a theoretical realm, actually beginning in reality, actually something beginning like a, a job or it, it took on a physical form. It might have been a long held dream, but so much potential. Why am I seeing Horton? Here's a who. I can't even remember what that's about. Okay, well, uh, Horton, here's a who is coming in here. Um, so trumpeting some sort of new beginning, some sort of Again, we have these messenger messages around it. It's like an announcement of something. A lot of announcing energy here. And a lot of like something that's been just spoken about, dreamed about, passion. It's got like all the like wands and swords, the passion, the communication, the talk, talk, talk. And it's like, actually, here it is in reality. Here it came up. Here it transformed. Here it emerged from one world into our world, from a theoretical place into our place, which is what I was getting from your, your uh, eight of wands here. So something emerging from a theoretical place into reality, into physicality. There's still so much potential, but we have the groundwork laid. We have some sort of basement foundation poured here. Really great foundation to grow on and to, to very reliable beginning. Current situation, you have the magician. What do we have? We have 
we just don't have cups it's like the only thing we don't have to to create here um but here's jack Jack. Jack has been a bit of a pain in the ass today. He totally had me believing that his automatic feeder, I got him an automatic feeder because he winds out food all the time. Um, and then he got, and so then I was responding to the whining and feeding him every time he whined. And then he got too big to like jump up on anything, which is possibly great. Um, so then I got him an automatic feeder and he's had me convinced for the last couple of weeks that his automatic feeder is broken. And so I was like feeding him extra and then I finally had some time to check it out. It's not broken at all. And he can't jump up on the bed anymore, but he can apparently jump up on here. So that's my little story, but I'm removing this, this mayhem. Anyway, so today, uh, as expected, he was not very polite about his removal from the situation today. He has been very, since I'm back to like, no, I figured it out. It's not working. You're a liar is what's going on here. Um, so that could be, I don't know how that would relate to your reading, but apparently we went, we went there. So, uh, oh, my God. he just, just redistributed the cards. So there, but luckily I paid enough attention to him when I laid him out that we're fine. So the magician is where you're at right now. That's, uh, you got the ability to make something happen. A plan is coming together here. And then see, we've got some birds with some messages right in here. We've got plans coming together and the magician gets it all kind of thought out, laid out. The magician knows what they're doing. There's a sense too, I want to say of like channeling some sort of divine energy impetus. There's, um, what do you call that initiative? There's a lot of initiative and a lot of, um, power and maybe it's to grow this ace of pentacles, right? We have the, we had a good foundation, a really good, powerful start to something in reality. And here we have the magician energy coming in here with like all the rest of the things that you need. We got a good start. We, we laid a good base. It's like, I don't know, you're cooking something and you've got like the basics and now it's time to start like adding in some other items and, and, but you've got, you've got a good base here to build on. So the magician is building on this ace of pentacles. Uh, there might, there might, it might still be in the planning stages. It might be, um, you know, communicating what the plans are. I almost see like, it's almost like you, you poured the, you poured the foundation before you started working on the blueprint. So it's a little out of order, but, um, but it's like, it's like you started cooking and then you realize like, ah, we're going to need a few other things here, a few other ingredients, right? Because my magician, I was talking about the magician as the mise en place, like cook, right? We've got everything set up. So it's like you started cooking, you got something done and you're like, you know what? Let's, let's make this into a whole meal. What else do we need? And now you're sitting down and looking at the different things you're going to make. It's like you made the turkey or you got the turkey in the oven or you got the turkey deep thawed and defrosting. Um, and now you're like, okay, now what else are we going to have? And so you're kind of putting together the rest of the menu, even though you're like a little bit already into the process. Um, you're putting together sort of the rest of the menu and what needs to happen and sort of looking at some of the logistics here. The magician to me always looks at the logistics because we don't want a crappy magician that's just like throwing stuff together and like, oh, I meant to, meant to make a rabbit, meant to pull a rabbit out of that hat and said I... I pulled a couple scorpions, sorry. Um, so like, it's like, um, and, and it has to do with, there's, there's some sort of communication or like actually laying, it's like relaying the groundwork or, oh, I poured the foundation. Okay. All right. That's done. Uh, let's see what kind of house we can build on this foundation though. Cause I like it. I like the poured foundation. I think this worked really well. We can continue building on this. And so now it's like, Maybe the foundation got poured very accidentally and, and you're just like, oh, okay, that happened. All right, well, let's see what we can do with this. Let's see if we can work with this and work this into some other plan or work a plan around what's already gone on and what's already happened. Because it looks very promising. Like there was this promising new beginning and now it's sort of like, okay, well, well, maybe I can work with this. 
So um, in your inner landscape, we have the lovers. And so we have um, the swan here. We have the rabbit here. We don't really have, this is a very rabbit heavy deck, but this is our only rabbit. Um, so we have the swan with a message with a letter uh, coming in here, communication. And the lovers talks about, well, it talks about a deep connection. This is, I think, possibly one of the most romantic lovers cards I've ever seen. So it's hard for, like, oftentimes the lovers talk about, like, a connection is available. There's a deepness here that's available. Or do you want to head in that direction? Or are sort of some of the fears and day-to-day -day, uh, concerns, are they going to hold you back? Um, so, but this one's just so, like, romantic looking. It's hard to see it as anything other than, like, a the possibility for deep connection here, either with a project or with somebody. Um, but there might be a, something a little illogical or a little fanciful about the movement. Right, we've got like Pegasus here. We've got fairies swirling around them. Like on the one hand, it's all beauty and gorgeousness. On the other hand, there's like a fantasy element to it. Well, I mean, this whole deck is a fantasy element. We've got like an owl sitting on someone's hair over here. Um, oh, yeah, there's a lot of wisdom with this, with what you're doing, with how you're taking something that's already started, already built, this accidentally poured foundation. You're looking at it like it's good. And then now realizing that you want to build on that foundation. And then there's there's like this owl here this intelligence and almost like this divine wisdom that's part of like like in the owl as being like a, the overall plan the visionary the being able to see in the dark um the visionary so there's like a very visionary aspect of what you're doing with this like pre-poured foundation or this thing you know you're seeing you can build on this and there's some sort of there's actually been like maybe a plan the whole time about this and, and you're realizing, ah, that's why I did that. Again, we just have these messages between the two and your inner landscape, hope, you're, I mean, you're very hopeful about the situation. And maybe there's a fear that it's a bit of a fantasy or a bit of a, a bit of a weird thing or it's not going to, I mean, there's the potential for it to not work out. It's a potential for it to be like a, a very destructive situation right especially if we're looking at a foundation that's already been poured and we're wanting to build on it there's a sense of well do i want to do this because this isn't the foundation i would have poured you know if i was building my dream house this isn't the foundation i would have poured so do i want to continue building on this understanding that i'm making sacrifices um i'm making sacrifices with my ideal Right. There's something that like um, some of the most difficult things on like couples and to deal with is like graduate school, um, having kids and building a house together is one of the things. And the, I've watched it happen. I've watched friends um, relationships be destroyed by this. And it, in large part, it's because both of them view it as and from my perspective, anyway, um, both of them view it as an opportunity for their dream house, for their wildest fantasy of what a house could be to come true. And there's so much, it's such a loaded topic, our house, our home, our, our shell. It's like we don't get to pick our bodies, but we do get to, when we're building a house, it's almost like picking the shell that's going to house our life, house our family, house our, our, um, our you know, our our spirit so and we don't get to pick the body right we're just kind of like ah, here's your body you get it uh it's not you know until it runs out it's yours um and we don't really get to pick that so the house can be like a proxy for that body or for that like like how do we want to be housed how do we want our spirit how do we want our life to be housed and so it's this opportunity to engage with this fantasy and then we have the other person interfering with our fantasy. Like, this is my fantasy of what I want my house to look like. And then they have their fantasy of what their house to look, looks like. So instead of a couple creating a, a housing for their joint 
life and energy and fantasy. We have a, a couple where the other person becomes a barrier to them getting what they truly want and fantasy. And so I, I'm seeing that idea presented with this lover's card, you know, um, like unless we're building our houses, the, all the houses are secondhand. It's like secondhand shopping, right? You can't, you find a shirt you like, you don't get to get it in a different size. It's, it's, it is what it is. You either like this as it is, or you don't like that as it is. And that can be with relationships. That can be, you know, the people in our lives. We, either, we don't get to like, well, I like this person, but I, 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 can I get them in a different color? Or I like this person, but I'd like them in a different size. That's not, that's not how any of this other than mass produced clothing works is that we can, or mass produced products work is that we can get it in a different size or a different shape. And so most of us, unless you're building a house from scratch, you're working with what's on the market, what's available, what for what price, for your price range, all of that. You don't get to like order up your um, most things in life. So this is a little bit of that. Like, like this lover's card is like, do I really want to, you know, buy a house that's already been lived in, that's already been made? Or do I really want to build a house on this like foundation where it's, I'm not going to get the exact house that I want. I'm not going to get exactly what I want here. And so then, the, then of course, the, the, the possibility for resentment um, of the other person for being the barrier to what you want can always be an issue and come up. So the, this is like story time with Empress Rose here apparently today. But yeah, that's, what the, that's what's coming through with the lover's card is do you want to build on, do you, do, there are compromises because especially with like um, this, the, there are compromises, like, um, especially with like, well, with a lot of things, it's not, it's not an equation. There's, there's the heart issue that comes in and it's not, if something fits very neatly into the equation of your life, there's something suspicious in my opinion and questionable about that. So the lover's card talks about something that really calls to you that you really connect with, but it has a bunch of caveats to it. It's, it's a house that's already been lived in. It's a foundation that's already been poured. It's, there's a lot of, you know, of, of other people's decisions having already been made here for you is what I'm getting from this. Um, what's at issue here? Seven of wands, not standing up for what you want, right? Yeah, not standing up for what we already have this foundation laid. And either you're, somebody here isn't, isn't being true to what they really truly want. Like, their ideal and that's what i'm seeing with this ace of pentacles it is something it is a really great laid foundation is it your ideal i don't think so do you want to hold out for your ideal maybe you do or maybe you know you know you don't want this your lover to turn into the barrier of your dreams coming true but there is something of someone here isn't standing up for what they want and maybe that's a good thing um, seven of wands and then eight of wands. Someone's, someone's not, um, holding out for their, their ideal. They have a right to. Uh, maybe not making space for their own passions. Right? It's this whole concept of this foundation being laid. Are you going to... Are you going to build a house on someone else's foundation? Or are you going to... Um, it's like almost you inherited a project or something. <laughs> You're like, well, do I want to hold out for the project I want? I, there's part of this project that resonates with you, you know? And these these storylines can be kind of small. You know, it can just be like, ah. Here's this, you know, someone started a project, you're getting it, figuring out where you want to go with it. Is it ever going to be your ideal? No. Do you want to proceed anyway or do you want to hold out? Um, and then uh, in your environment, you have strength, which is interesting because strength is an internal card. Uh, but again, we have this like divine guidance, um, infinity symbol and strength the the this is interesting because seven of wands in reverse is not holding strong 
but someone, perhaps someone in your environment is holding strong or the situation in the environment is holding strong or this Ace of Pentacles is quite strong. The Strength card talks about not quitting. The Strength card talks about not giving in. The Strength card, card is about inner strength, managing emotions, managing bravery, courage. Watching, I think there's a sense of possibly someone or possibly the environment not allowing for a full expression of emotions, but a lot of restraint. So it could be, it's your environment is requiring you to exercise a lot of restraint, especially since like some other foundation got poured you know, before you were ready or before you were, the foundation got poured, you know, it was like someone else's house and the foundation got poured and you're like, well, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> um, so, but it's a very strong foundation. It's very, it's something here is very strong, very stable. And it's not going anywhere, you know, unless you blast that found that, that foundation there it is. It's almost like the plans to someone else's house and then they poured the foundation on your property and you're having to kind of look at it and be like, oh, well, it's a good foundation, so I don't know. Maybe I should just roll with it. Um, but there is something in your environment that's causing you to uh, like hold your tongue, have a, exercise a lot of inner strength and self-control. Um, your to-do list is Knight of Swords. So here we have communication upon communication. You were wondering about communication that's overall. And now we have the communicating communicator. Knight of Swords brings in the truth. Clears up some confusion. Because it's like, like, how did this foundation get poured? Clears up with some confusion here. It's not like... Ooh, we have a little cockfight. Like a, this could be like a wake-up call too. This is a sword. Yeah, I'm just thinking about like the little spurs on the back of like the the rooster's legs when they're fighting. Not that I endorse that or have ever seen that like actually in action I don't think I would like it but there's some there's some spurs here which is like very direct communication I want to say there's like there's like I'm gonna, like, it sounds like, sounds like a whip cracking. There's like a wake up, like you are delivering it though. Some kind of direct wake up call, a call to action that is sharp. It's like you inherited some kind of problem and you've got to like be super clear about where you're at with it and what you want to do and what needs to happen. You have all the power. You have, you have every, you're ready, you're prepared. And this Knight of Swords is some sort of wake up call. It clarifies things. And it makes things move. There's a motivational aspect to this Knight of Swords. There is such a confrontational like vibe to this guy too. I don't usually see that with the Knight of Swords, but those confrontational vibe. All right. All right. <laughs> 
Yeah, see what I'm saying? This, can you hear him? He's, I don't know, he's having a day. He's in a mood today. He's, he's received plenty of TLC, so I don't know. There's not much more I can do. He just wants food. And more. And more food. And an endless amount of food. He's like, yeah. You know me. <laughs> okay, possible outcome. Six of Pentacles in exchange of gifts. The Pentacles, uh, Six of Pentacles is about gifts. Uh, there's no earning involved. There's no work involved. I mean, somebody earned it at some point, but... Um, but there's no, it's gifts, it's exchange of gifts. Yeah, six of pentacles. Um, it's not about earning, it's not about deserving. There is a sense of balance, though, overall to the universe, restoring balance to something. But uh, you may receive something, you may be giving something. It, there's a sense of generosity here and maybe you've been a little like I don't know I want to say picky about this foundation but not really because it's your dream but there's a sense of generosity here um and giving and restoring some sort of harmony and balance through unearned gifts because a lot of times we work for things and we don't receive the rewards so there's a sense of either receiving or giving a reward for work not necessarily put into this particular project. You may be receiving a gift, you may be giving a gift. I love, I, what I love is how it comes underneath this lover's card. Is there something about that, like a generosity here? All right, well, let's come up with some chiromancy. <laughs> I swear to God, this cat's gonna like eat me. Jack. You want to see him? Here he is. This is Jack. Agent of chaos and mayhem. Somehow invited this stray cat into my home at some point. He just showed up. All right. Chiromancy for Gemini. Be spirit. Prosperity. Ooh, I like it with this. Well, I would show you the exchange of gifts, but Jack's giant derriere is on it. Okay, I'm going to not make too many jokes about your, I don't know, um, about your size right now. He's a big cat already. So, be spirit, prosperity. I love this. Um, what's this? Prosperity lies ahead. You're ready to go. There's almost like some kind of, it, and bees might be important. Daylilies might be important. Fern might be important. There's like this opening. There's like this brightness. There's a shine to things. There's a ring here. Maybe it's a pot. It's a jar. It's a jar of honey. Like, I don't know. I'm struggling with what that is. I think it's a jar of honey. A little honey pot. After a lot of work, you know, those bees, they work. They work together. They work hard. I don't know if they work hard. They take some naps. They sting some people. But it's like this, this, I, I can see it with the Six of Pentacles for sure. Like a shiny little pentacle. Looking like a pot of honey coming in here. Prosperity. All right. Uh, and then your little prayer. Loyal Llama. Patience, stamina, diligence. Oh, this, this has strength card written all over it. Uh, Loyal Llama. Patience, stamina, diligence. Persistent and peaceful grassland dweller. Show me fortitude in troubled times. All right. Oh, I was not expecting that. The fortitude in troubled times. Llamas are great protectors. I used to have a farm and some farmers would have, um, so, you know, you chat with other farmers. They would have uh, llamas out with their calves to protect them from coyotes. So patient stamina diligence well we got that with the strength card your situation requires it or is demanding it of you so anyway Gemini I hope that that was well that worked out well for you or that made sense to you or that was helpful that's the word helpful for you um and if you want join me over on Vimeo for a love specific reading that's what we're gonna do now so uh thanks for joining me over here 
I'll see you over there. Well, I won't see you at all, but um, you might see me if you want. All right. Ciao. See ya.